Welcome to another episode of American Reef. I'm Russ Kickle, and today's show is all about Tunzi. But before we do that, let's have a word from our sponsor. So before we talk Tunzi, a quick reminder. If you watch the American Reef video series, right, whether that's the product showcase or advanced aquarists, right, and you find value in that, please go out to AmericanReef.com and subscribe to the Reef Tutor video series. Basically, it is a $2 a month subscription service where for that $2 a month, you get access to well over 150-ish uh, episodes of, again, how to keep a reef tank. Most of those episodes, uh, we were fortunate enough to actually go behind the scenes of a local fish store for about two years, right? And um, not only were we able to see how you know, he runs his shop and, and how he orders fish and coral and things of that nature, but he also teaches us how he successfully kept reef tanks and his service business, etc. Again, well worth a $2 a month subscription. So again, let's talk some Tunzi. So Tunzi is the newest sponsor to join American Reef. Now you all have heard me say many, many times, I only offer my sponsorships to good guys, honest guys that won't let you fail. Luckily, in Tunzi's case, there's decades of experience that prove that statement to be true. So I offered them the sponsorship they accepted. And now as American Reef kind of viewers and hobbyists, we have a wealth of uh, information, not only about the Tunzi products, but reef keeping in general. And ultimately, I believe that to uh, enable us to be more successful uh, reef keeping hobbyists. Now in today's video, Roger Vitko, who heads up Tunzi USA, is going to spend some time with us talking to us, to us excuse me, a little bit about the history. Um, and you know, if you're anything like me, I always like going behind the scenes. Um, you know, going to a, a, a candy factory, for example, and see how various candies, chocolate covered pretzels, things like that are made, right? And for me, it goes the same way with companies. I like to know and understand how companies are formed, right? What makes them who they are today? And uh, Roger was gracious enough to spend a good hour with us a few weeks back and uh, share that information with us. And as such, I want to pass it on to you. So rather than hear me talk, let's hear what Roger Vitko from Tunzi has to say. Now let's take a second first of all and introduce yourself, right? Um, again, you're Roger Vitko from Tunzi. Yeah, I, I'm the general manager of Tunzi USA. Um, I've run the U.S. office for uh, 10 years now, so this is uh, this is what I do, and this <laughs> is uh, you know just here to tell you a little bit about our company as well as the parent company in Germany. So I get, let's start at the beginning then. Tell me about okay. you know the history. What is Tunzi? Well, uh, Tunzi was founded by Norbert Tunzi in uh, 1960, and uh, essentially he was a radio and TV repairman. He had a uh, a shop. He was kind of the town Mister Fix It. Yep. And uh, you know worked on any sort of electronics. And how he got into the aquarium thing was he. he always kept an aquarium, but back then aquariums were, you know, underground filters and air pumps. 
And uh, Eheim at the time was a company that made toys. They made model railroad sets, and uh, a guy brought in a, a pump for the model railroad that ran a waterfall. He fixed it, and to test it, he, he tested it on his aquarium, and he noticed that the fish perked up and, you know, seemed to really like all this flow, but pumps back then, the water came in at the bottom and blew out the top. That wasn't very useful for an aquarium. Right. So he, uh, he worked on it. He actually wrote to Eheim and said, you know, hey, would you have an interest in, in making this? And they said, no, no, we make toys. We're really not interested. <laughs> right. And so he ran with it, developed the patents to project the flow forward, and basically invented the powerhead. And that came out in 1960. The first model was the uh, Turbella 400. And uh, a lot of people are, you know, where is this name Turbella come from? Exactly. Well, it, it, it's from Turban, like the impeller, and Libella, which is German for dragonfly. And that's because all those pumps back then had an air-cooled fan, and the noise from the fan sounded a lot like a dragonfly. Ah, okay. And so that's, that's where the name came from, is combining those two words. And... Uh, so, you know, he, he just got into it, and I mean, it started out like any very small company. He was making them in his garage, and, you know, there was, it was a fairly small market, but it grew and, you know, licensed the patents out to others, and all that came together, and he got more and more into it. And then, uh, oh, also in the early 60s, uh, uh, home hobbyists invented the protein skimmer, basically found that there was this brown foam collected by the uplift of his under gravel filter and he came up with a way to collect it and uh, a university analyzed it and said well you're skimming off the protein it's the same as sea foam and uh, then uh, actually the Sanders and Tunzi started working on commercial skimmers at the same time Sanders you know they're they're fairly famous as well for their airlift skimmers and the big monster skimmers mm -hmm. I think Helgoland's what they call their big one but uh, Tunzi uh, invented the first Venturi driven model and so that was 1963 mm -hmm. and um, the company just progressed from there just uh, you know it was the early days of the saltwater hobby, it was even hard to get commercial salt back then, so right. you were kind of on your own in untreaded water, and, and uh, that's that's where it all came about. I, I believe it was 94, uh, uh, Axel Tunzi, Norbert's son, took over running the company. Mm -hmm. I believe it was in the 70s, they moved to the current location, mm -hmm. uh, which was apparently an old, uh, they made... Uh, flax fabric, or it was like a, a linen fabric shop, okay. mm -hmm. and, you know, it was like a, a mill, sure. and they'd gone out of business, and so they bought out the, the factory, and they've since added on and converted it several times, but it's it's actually now two buildings, there's a separate machine shop just a little ways down the street, mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's run by the same family, so and, and still a small family owned company. I, I, my goal is really to help the smaller business, the family-owned businesses, right, succeed, get the word out, that kind of thing. That, and I think, again, smaller family-owned businesses have a heart and a soul, whereas, you know, in big business, it kind of gets lost a little bit, right? Yeah, and I, I think, you know, there's a lot of advantages to being a small company. You know, you see bigger companies, even, even though our industry isn't one that's really prone to big, giant companies, they're... You know, you have a few, but there just aren't many. Right, right. And, uh, you know, but they, you end up where you're having focus groups, shareholder meetings, you know, and a lot of right. good ideas just fall by the wayside because there's too many ifs, and there's right. no guarantee that this is going to pay off. And uh, with us, I think it's nice because it's a small company. Uh, a customer can, you know, tell us, hey, this broke, or, you know, and right. we can see, hey, there's too many things going wrong with this and you know we can make a design change and generally within six months we've got you know the, a remedy to that problem and we wouldn't have that flexibility if we were a bigger company. Yeah. Okay so you had mentioned the location right and the fact it's still family owned business. How many locations are there in general? Well the, the factory and the main headquarters is in Pennsburg, Germany. I mean that's really the, the lion's share of it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's 50 employees roughly and, and 
the manufacturing is done there, everything from the molding. We actually wind our own motor coils. I mean, almost everything's done in house. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, hold on. And, let, let me let me pause you there for a second. Okay, so that means like the cast molding and everything that is in that product is all done in house. So it's like it's like the old-fashioned watches, right? The gears are cut out by hand. I mean, like for the most part, everything is done there. Granted, you probably have to source some parts or pieces, but that's, that's it. I mean, there there are parts that are you know I mean are sourced all over the world. I mean, right. like on on dimmers, you know, we use a lot of black PVC. Well, the the biggest source of that is Spears in the U.S. So right. we order the pipe from that. We order the fittings from that. Right. Um, Magnets, magnets, and power supplies. Now you really can't get them anywhere outside of China. I mean, if you need a switching power supply or a magnet, mm -hmm. that's where it comes. Right, right. And so those parts, you know, they ship them over to us. And but the pump, the the injection molding, mm -hmm. the potting of the motor coils, the motor coil winding, that's all done, you know, in, in the factory. So. That's wild to think that every unit comes out of that factory, right? And and that and that's is that all products because i know you have a broad you know depth and breadth of products so there's you know there are a few exceptions i mean but but the vast majority like all the stream pumps nano stream pumps the osmolators mm -hmm. all of those are are made in-house uh, there there are a few pumps where parts are made by other companies in italy or, or other companies in germany mm -hmm. but uh, the vast majority are made uh, in-house. that is cool Okay, so I, I interrupted you when you were talking about the okay, Germany headquarters. Yeah. Uh, well, besides that, there's there's a you know we we have distributors and I believe we're up to sixty two countries now. Okay. But uh, you know, in terms of the major ones, where where the factory actually has partial ownership or say in the distribution, mm -hmm. and those are also the the facilities that tend to also serve as part of uh, research and development. Mm -hmm. Those are going to be Tunzi Italy, Tunzi France. Um, Tunzi France is a big one because uh, Claude, who's our uh, electrical engineer, he runs the office of Tunzi France. Okay. And he's actually the, the developer of the wave box and uh, developed the body style of the nano stream and stream pump, the current stream pumps. Mm -hmm. um, so he's a uh, you know, really bright guy and one of our key people. Um, Tunzi USA is myself. Uh, we have a Tunzi office in Australia and South Africa that are also big contributors. Uh, Tunzi UK is another one. Um, so those are really the, the key players in terms of development. And now, if you had to pick like an average size for, our, we'll say the satellite offices, for lack of a better word, right? You know, US, France, et cetera. What are the general sizes? Two to three employees, usually right. a husband and wife team. Right. That, that actually, you know, Tons of USA is myself and two other guys. Uh, right. If, if you get a spare part from us or if your dealer is placing an order, David packs it. I type up the orders in the morning and I get to work on emails and phone calls. Uh, Craig is, you know, my other guy. He's generally working on Facebook and outreach to try to recruit new dealers as well as uh, you know answering questions as well on, on Reef Central and the various blogs we support. Right. So that, that takes a lot of our time. And, and so in general that's the same mold right throughout the globe right so you it's kind of cool because you still have uh, it, it's a small company right very quick but yet a pretty wide depth and or I should say wide breadth so to speak right because you can yeah it's on. it's uh, you know, it's a pretty small, efficient model, and and it does, you know, it does put some extra taxes on things. I mean, there's there's a lot of days where it's like, how am I going to get all this done? And <laughs> it manages to get done, but it, it it's just sometimes like, we'll be sitting here and it's two, and somebody's calling, you know, hey, this broke, I need this part, I need it now. And right. It's like, man, this picks up in two hours, and I'm buried. And you know, it's, <laughs> but somehow we usually can get it squeezed in. So right. it's just being light and fast, that's, that's really all we <laughs> If there was one thing you could change about that model, what would it be? You know, I, I really hate bookkeeping. <laughs> <laughs>
Any sort of bookkeeping, tax forms, paperwork, I'd be happy to pass that off. <laughs> 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 um, we've probably talked now probably about 10-ish minutes or so. Let's take a break. Right, and then okay. we'll come back, and I want to talk a little bit about like kind of that that company profile, what you're good at, what you make, that kind of stuff. Okay. Sure. talking a little bit about the family side of it and what Tunzi does and, and in general can you put an umbrella as far as you know Tunzi as far as what do you guys do and again because most of my my viewers are new viewers new hobbyists etc they probably really don't know the depth and breadth of what you guys do sure well you know we're, we're probably mostly famous for powerheads protein skimmers and then the osmolator which is our auto top off system right um, the auto top off was something we came up with in, I believe it was 88. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that when, when it was introduced, uh, you know, it was kind of the subject of ridicule. It was everybody at, at Interzoo when we first announced it was like, geez, how lazy can people be? You know, just top off your tank. <laughs> but that was never the point. You know, the, right. the name Osmolator is a contraction of osmotic regulator. And the, the point was, was that if we could invent a unit that would keep this osmotic gradient so, you know, this osmotic pressure so tight that it would then be possible to breed shrimp and these sensitive crustaceans that if there's any fluctuation at a point where they're molting, it's game over. I mean, you've lost your whole batch. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it would be important to breeding fish and a lot of other things. And, and it just really affects the stability of the tank to keep that constant. Um, but, you know, in terms of going back to, to how we work as a, as a family company to develop products, right. typically, uh, you know, nowadays, Axel and Claude or, or myself will flesh out the ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, then once we've got a general concept, then usually it goes to uh, Brigetta Tenzi, who's Axel's wife, and she runs an aquarium shop and has all the, the research tanks where we test everything. Sure. And um, she'll give it, you know, a few months trial run and say, well, this doesn't work. This this works well. You know, change this, do that. And that's how the products get tweaked down to where they work. And uh, then they're run for a little longer term there as we kind of finalize them. Um, and it's interesting now because Axel's oldest son, Felix, is, is also part of the company and mm -hmm. working on product development while he's in uh, engineering school. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's that's been real interesting. He he has a lot of good ideas, and you know one problem for most of us is we're we're kind of uh, beginning of the computer age, and you know we we see computers as interesting, but we're not fully comfortable with them. I mean, myself, I'm more of a mechanical gearhead right. person than a computer person. Right, right. And uh, and you know having somebody that their whole life has been around smartphones and computers. They, they certainly can take things in another direction. So. Uh, what other kind of products that, that you have that maybe um, have been developed but we don't quite hear enough about or maybe they just haven't taken you know that traction yet? Well, I mean, we're kind of a, a full range company. We, mm -hmm. we do everything from uh, RO units, which we actually produce here. Most of them are sold in Europe, but mm -hmm. uh, since most of the components come from the U.S. or Asia, they, they're generally available from distributors in California, and even if they're made in Europe, they're going to have to come from there anyway. So sure. uh, it just makes the most sense that we assemble them here and ship them over there. Mm -hmm. um, then the other products are CO2 regulators, uh, uh, calcium reactors, um, filters, uh, filter media, Epoxy stick. I mean, you, you name it, we probably have. <laughs> so uh, it's a pretty full range. You know, when you when you mention your products and the quality of your products, that sort of thing, is there kind of a mantra that like Tunzi in general follows? 
Right? Is there is there kind of a, a corporate like vision, so to speak, that kind of encapsulates that? Yeah, I mean, we we basically, you know, what we pride ourselves on is being innovators and being kind of the first with a new idea. Mm -hmm. You know, from the earliest days to you know the wave box, the the propeller pump. Um, you know, those were all things that we really pioneered and and. Uh, that's um, a big thing to us is to try to have the new idea first and mm -hmm. it you know a lot of ideas just don't pan out I mean you, it's it's like you know you talk about Thomas Edison and how many light bulbs he went through before he got one that worked and uh, it, it's that way for us I mean we, we may have a idea that sounds really intriguing but then you get into it and it's just totally off the wall and it's like there's no way this is going to work and you just are there hey you know this was a waste of time. Right, <laughs> right. But, uh, right. Good in theory, but, right? <laughs> but, you know, there's, there's, uh, and besides that, you know, we also really try to focus on energy efficiency and, and uh, producing a product that, that is low, to, low cost to operate and uh, gives you your money's worth and mm -hmm. it's going to last a long time. Mm -hmm. And we provide a, you know, a good warranty and a good service to back it up. I mean, for two years, everything's covered. As long as it's not neglect or abuse, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we really try to stand behind what we need. And now, is that is that to your uh, warranty for every product? Yes. So yeah, I mean, there's there's a handful of exceptions, like uh -huh. the, you know things that are light bulbs and sure. pH electrodes, stuff like that. That more or less, those are things with a finite life, and you know, we those I think they're six months, and thereafter they're they're pro rate. Sure, sure. It's like brakes on a car, right? <laughs> As far as kind of um, like just the U.S. division, right? You, you know, again, and the guys we've talked about. How did you guys actually get involved, right, with 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 Tunzi? I mean, how did that all kind of yeah it's, take place? It's a real interesting story. I mean, it's it's one of those. It's the uh, you know I, I can remember as a younger man always being kind of you know you'd hear like your mom and women would tell you about fate and you know all this sort of thing you'd be like yeah whatever right right <laughs> like, well, let's see that's a bunch of junk you know but uh, that that was one experience in my life that really changed my attitude when people started talking about stuff like that and uh, essentially I, I remember you know I, I started an aquarium shop in Austin Texas which is where we're located uh, I'd been out of college for about a year. I was I was pre med and and uh, ended up getting my degree in psychology and giving up on the pre med part and uh, started a, a, an aquarium shop and uh, we carried Tunzi and the distributor at the time had, had gone out of business and we were you know left we were using all this stuff we needed parts. So I got on the internet, went to the Tunzi web page, uh, sent him an email. I actually got an answer from Axel Tunzi, and that was a real shock. And he said, yeah, we'll sell you parts, you know, and, and uh, sent me a catalog and a price list. And we started ordering and selling it. We were, we were actually doing pretty good. The price was a lot less than buying from the distributor. And um, so then, you know, one day, I, I uh, it was a Saturday, and it was like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And I was at the shop, and I thought, and I'm going to call these guys and just, you know, see about maybe doing something more. And it didn't even dawn on me that 3 o'clock in the afternoon there is like, it's 10 o'clock at night there, and it's a Saturday. Well, Mr. Tunzi was in his office getting ready for a business trip, and he answered the phone. Mm -hmm. And we started talking, and he said, yeah, I'm going to this backer show in Chicago. Um, I'm going to also buy a ticket to Austin, and I'll come see you. And so he shows up, and we started talking, and you know, kind of grew from there. And and uh, at the time, they were selling to anybody that would, you know, that placed an order with them. Mm -hmm. And then problems started coming up. They would, you know, the U.S. market was small. There would be occasional mishaps where a U.S. customer would get a German product, wrong plug, you know, wrong pump. Uh, they needed somebody to do warranty and to take care of those problems. So then they asked me to do it. And, over a few years, I've built up trust and a good working relationship with them, and that's how it all started. It was just one of those, you know, that one phone call that uh, you never would have thought, you know, if you were in your right mind, nobody would have <laughs> answered at that time. And 
it just somehow worked out. So. If you could do it all over again, would you do it? You know, I, I honestly, I do sometimes uh, think of, you know, what my life would have been like if I would have become a doctor. You know, my, my dad's a surgeon, and, and I've always kind of, you know, I just have always been fascinated by science and medicine, and I do like that. But I also see the bad side of a lot of that, you know, from just watching my dad, and that it's very high stress. You can you'd be called in at 2, 3 in the morning. There's no consistency to your life. You're kind of at the mercy of when people get sick, when people get hurt, and uh, you, you really give up a lot to have that. And so I... Uh, I'm, I, you know, I'd say I'm happy where I'm at, and, uh, you know, you always think of, could I have done this differently, could I have done this better, I think that's just human nature, but, but, but I, I would say that uh, things have worked out well for me, and, and I, I plan to stay with this, and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy with it, I, I really enjoy, you know, the, the company I'm a part of, it's, it's basically like a family, and, uh, and I, I'm really proud of what we've done. So then, uh, maybe for the next show, then what we'll do is we'll actually talk a little bit about the flow, right? We, you know, we can talk about maybe some of the uh, the unique unique characteristics that the Tunzi Flow products bring, right? Maybe what those products are. Like I, I liked how um, in the beginning you gave a little history of where you get the names from and, and that sort of stuff. So maybe we can go to a little history of, you know, again. The, the kind of flow products you got and and you know just again maybe what sets it apart versus you know from maybe some of the other kind of flow products on the marketplace sound good sounds good okay then we'll uh, we'll say goodbye for now and and then what we'll do is uh, coordinate the next time and we'll be talking flow okay thanks for us that was Roger Vitko of Tunzi USA and again I hope you guys found the uh, information that Roger shared with us as uh, informative and interesting as I did again I, I love understanding how companies came to be and you know what kind of makes them the company they are today and in that kind of spirit if there are any questions that you'd like me to ask Roger, any topics that you'd like to suggest we discuss feel free to uh, email them over to American Reef at me.com Again, as you've heard me say many times, please support our sponsors and give them a chance to earn your business. In this particular case, you know, it's Tunzi. Again, and where can you get Tunzi products? And again, from Ball Grief Supply, Premium Aquatics, right? Companies that you know are good companies that won't let you fail. And kind of see how that works, right? Again, good companies with good products will not support and endorse each other. So, again, please give them a chance to earn that business. I'm Russ Kickle. Thanks for watching. American Nation.